Good evening, my fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests. Welcome to Toastmasters on Purpose, our evaluation, how to evaluate and master your evaluations this evening. Just a reminder again, if you haven't turned off your electronic device, if you please do so, so we don't interrupt our presenters. And we won't have to confiscate your cell phone because Iqbal Acha, who's our program quality director, said that if any cell phone goes off during an event, he's going to confiscate them, he's going to take them to the fall conference, and he's going to put all the cell phones into the silent auction. So just keep that in mind. If your cell phone goes off, Iqbal will be here outside the door to confiscate your cell phone. Keep that, I'm just saying, keep that top of mind. Has it happened yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> it happened up in Lincolnshire, though. <laughs> okay, so let me give you kind of a rundown of what's going to happen this evening. The first half of the meeting, Virginia's going to cover that, and then we're going to kind of segue into it. We actually have the two V's presenting tonight, and I will read you their bios in just a moment. So Virginia will cover the first part of it. You can look at your agenda, and she'll explain more in detail exactly what she's going to cover, and then Val will cover the next part of the meeting. How many of you really think that evaluations are critical to becoming a more effective speaker? Good, I'm glad to see every hand raised because no matter how long we're in Toastmasters or how little we're in Toastmasters, we can always improve on our evaluations. And by coming, becoming better evaluators, we also become much, much better speakers because if you think about it, you're using three of your skills. Anybody know what those three skills are? Sign up. Listening. Right, Donna? What else? Thinking. So listening, thinking, and? Speaking. Speaking. You get to practice all three of those skills when you're an evaluator. So even if you're not, even if you're not a prepared speaker, and you're evaluating the speaker, you get to speak anyway. So evaluation is a tough stroll in the Toastmasters Club. The evaluator must listen carefully. He has to quickly form an opinion about the speaker's strengths and weakness, and of course, and then present, as Valerie and Virginia will cover, an organized extemporaneous speech that's sincere, positive, and helpful. Poor evaluations? Well, we've all heard some really poor evaluations that weren't very good. So let me introduce our two presenters this evening. Our first presenter this evening is Virginia Bosserm, a distinguished Toastmaster. She actually joined Toastmasters in 2010. She belongs to three Toastmasters clubs. She belongs to Club Toast at UL, Look Who's Talking at Gurney, and of course, Toastmasters on Purpose here at Hopper College. She's been the Vice President of PR, she's been a Treasurer, she's been a President, Vice President of Membership, Secretary, and multiple times Vice President of Education. This year, she's Vice President of Education, and she's also President of Top Toastmasters, and then she's an officer at another club. She's also a past area governor of North 44, a past youth leadership program chair, and she completed her DTM in less than three years. The average distinguished Toastmaster, it takes them between six to eight years. So I would say she's been on a fast track, wouldn't you? Yes. yes. She's been an employee at Underwriters Laboratory for over 28 years now? Yes. 28 years. She's held various management <coughs> positions. And one of her side jobs at UL, or was, conducting leadership training for management and team building programs for all the staff. It's a welcome break from her, J for her day job as a DQ. No, I'm sorry, that's data governor. The other DQ is something else for the customer master. So please help me welcome to the lectern, distinguished Toastmaster, Virginia Foster. I have no idea why I did my DTM so fast. I think it's because I finished my CC so fast. I finished my CC in four months. Oh my gosh. Be there's always a reason. Because my icebreaker was so horrible, and I thought I was having a heart attack while I was giving it, and I couldn't see any of the words on the page. And I figured the only way to get over that 
was to keep doing it until that stopped. And so for the, I pretty much did a speech almost every week until, unfortunately Christmas was in there, so I got a couple of weeks off. And then after I finished it, people told me you can rework a speech and give it again. No, I had to do 10 separate speeches. So it just, and it wasn't even planned to do the DTM. I just kept doing these advanced manuals and well, the rest is history. So if you don't think you can do it, you can do it. So what I'm going to do tonight first is I'm going to go over the judging for the evaluation contest. I wasn't going to, because this isn't about winning a contest. It's about giving better evaluations in your club, and if you're in a contest, in your contest. However, I know there are several people here who are competing, and I have already had this presentation prepared, so we will go through it rather quickly. So, <coughs> if you guys would pass out the judging form, we're going to quickly go through that and after we go through that we are I'm going to invite Val to come up here and we're going to go through some judging tips and some judging forms that Top has had in the past that we that we use now so that if you ever want to come back to Top and give a speech, you'll be prepared as to how we do it. And then Val has even found some forms out on the internet. And then we'll discuss the new ruling about using forms in the contest so that everybody is clear about that. And then I will sit down and Val will, well, we'll have a break. And then Val will come up here, and we're going to go through some clips of some speeches and evaluations so that we can then all look at them at the same time. We don't have to worry about hurting anybody's feelings because nobody there has, is in the room. Well, you know, if you pick at it too much, people start to get a little uncomfortable then uh, we'll all have a chance to then participate and, and see what we think compared to what the evaluator thinks. Okay? So that's pretty much tonight. Of course, we'll open it up for questions and answers. All right, so, seriously? It went to sleep. Yeah. I bored it and it went to sleep. <laughs> All right. So let's just understand the judging criteria. Now I have to start off by saying that even though judges go to judges training, there's a lot that is supposed to happen. It's not a guarantee. Because we're all people and we all have different opinions on things. So, yeah, they're supposed to use the guide and the ballot. But some people just use that as a suggestion. And they have their own system for deciding who ranks first, second, and third. Right? And there's no Toastmasters police that go through the audience, or the ballot counters don't get the top part of the form, so they have no idea what methodology anyone has, has used. But it's still a good idea to understand <coughs> what they're supposed to be using because most of them will use the form as a guide. All right, and so they should follow the suggested point values. Some people use hash marks or they use stars or pluses and minuses just to give an idea as to which speaker or what part of the speech was better than another. But in the end, they're going to, when it comes to putting one, two, and three, yeah, they'll add up the points, but as they're going down, they might say, well, no, it was really better than that, and they'll be changing it because they have their own gut feeling. The numbers help them. But in the end, they may have been too low on the first one because it was the first person out. And they may realize that by the time they get to the last person that the first person was really a stronger speaker. So you always have that human factor in there, right? 
So just be aware of that. It's not, not a perfect science. So if you look at your form, you can see that 40%, almost half of the points that the judges are supposed to be using is on your analytical process and what you have shared. So that you really pay attention and we're studying them to see what they were doing and what perhaps could be done about it. Which comes to the next area, which are your recommendations. Okay? So what are you giving that speaker to help them improve? So we don't want to say things like, you didn't do this and you didn't do that. We want to say, you did this and it was good. But if you changed it and did it this way, that would really knock it out of the park, right? Because it's more of a, it's a feedback tool that's more like a coaching tool, right? So that reminds me, you always want to tell them what they did right. And I'm not just talking about contests here, I'm talking about evaluations in general. If we don't focus on what the person did really well, then how do they know to do that again in the future? If it was ignored, then maybe they'll never do it again. And maybe that was really effective. So if they're using their voice effectively, or if they have a certain gesture that they made that really drove the point home, tell them that. Because in the club, other people are new, and they would never think of doing that, because that's what the evaluation is all about. <clears throat> it's for the person who gave the speech, and it's for the rest of the audience to learn. Right? Have you ever sat in the audience and had an evaluator evaluate someone else Say something that someone told you in an evaluation that didn't make sense, and all of a sudden you go, that's what moving with purpose means. That's what such and such means. Oh, that's what I was doing. Because we're not always fortunate enough to have somebody like Tim videotaping us. And so when the evaluator says, you're going like this all the time, and if that's something that you're not noticing, you're like, I don't think I did that. I don't think that evaluator was nuts. Because right? we sometimes do it so often, it, it's a habit. <coughs> so then, what's your technique? So what, what do you think that is? Your technique is how you actually give the evaluation. Right? So are you more like a coach? Are you, uh, are you very structured and very organized? Do you use humor? Are you very affable? Are you speaking to the audience and to the individual? Some people think it's better to do the evaluation in first person. Some people think it's better to do it in third person. It's all whatever you prefer, but they're going to notice it. Especially, I was at a contest once where everybody else did it one way, and somebody else talked about the person in the evaluation as if they weren't even there. It was a great evaluation, except that they totally ignored the person who had been speaking, and really spoke as if the person wasn't there. And I thought that was really odd, and obviously they didn't. And then the final point is your summation. And this was something that I figured out a long time ago, that I had to know my opening and my summation. If I saw the cards change, I have to get that summation in, because 15 points could be the difference between one person winning and another. And a lot of people, as soon as that card comes up, they panic and they end. So it's something to realize when the yellow card comes up that I have to get to my summation quickly. Maybe I don't get to give that fourth point. Okay, so that's something you want to try to always work in, even if it's a short conclusion. 
give a conclusion because that may be the one thing that's at the bottom of the form that, and it's something that I pay attention to. If I look at mine when I'm judging and only one person actually had a summation, that tells me something, right? Everybody else missed up. So keep that in mind when you're planning your, your evaluations. Uh, of course, in the club, you know, we don't have to worry if we're 15 seconds over, but trust me, you have to worry if your speech is 15 seconds over. So analytical, is it clear, is it focused? Are you giving specific feedback? And that is not just in speech evaluations. That's in any kind of feedback. If I say, Jerry, thanks for helping. He might say, okay, you're welcome. If I say, Jerry, thanks for going out and getting the bottle of water. We appreciate it. Now he knows exactly what he did. The same thing when you're working with people. If someone does a project and you just say, well, that was a great project, but you didn't tell them exactly what it was that was great about it, how do they know what they should do in the future? Right? So we, we need to get into the habit of having specific points that we thought that they did well and then how they could improve upon that. Um, and then, obviously, we want to present clearly and logically. We don't want to wander around, which is why we do table topics, right? So we learn how to form our opinion and, and speak clearly and concisely. So we don't want to start with the opening, somehow jump to the conclusion, and then go back to the opening again, because the person listening is going to get totally confused, and so will the audience. All right? So these are just basics. I'm sure you've all used these, even in your club context. But the recommendations, are they helpful? Well, I would hope so. I don't know why you would give a recommendation that isn't helpful. But is it really going to help them improve? Or is it just an opinion? Um, for instance, Donna, I hope you don't mind me calling on you. No. But Donna visited my club at UL today, and she asked for a round robin. And I thought that some of the advice that she was given was perhaps not the best advice, and I don't think she should change her speech the way they were saying it. But of course, as a Toastmaster, I could not say that to them. We had to let the round robin go. So, you know, just because you have an opinion about something doesn't mean that that's going to be great advice for the person. So we want to make sure that it's actually good advice that is going to be helpful. And you're going to focus on helping them with their future speeches. So if they know what they did well, and that that's a strength, then they know they should think about adding that to other speeches. And if they know that they do something, like I have a tendency of putting my foot out because my other foot hurts, so that is apparently not a very effective stance, I'll try not to do that until my foot hurts and then I'm going to do that. But if that was something that was annoying to the audience, then I might work on that. I used to have dinosaur arms, where I kept my arms down and just did gestures this way. That's not very effective. And that was one of the things that someone told Donna not to raise her arms up. And I was Above like, my waist. What? That's not a good, that's not a good advice. So we want to make sure that we're giving good advice that will help them with their future speeches. Um, and then our technique. Are we a sympathetic type of speaker? Are we a motivational speaker? This was a great speech, and I know that you're going to be able to take this and do this with it and do that with it. And if that's how you give evaluations, you should be natural and you should do that. But that's what the judges are looking at. They're, they're comparing of what they think is effective, what they think is a good evaluation, and again, some of that is going to be their opinion. But you do want to inspire and encourage the person to continue speaking, to try some of these things, to develop their skills, and that's what it's all about. And then, again, you need to have a summation, because it's so abrupt if you don't. 
It's like getting an email that's not signed, right? Or a, a form letter. But think of the person getting the evaluation. They don't typically have a pad of paper. So they're trying to remember all the things that you're saying to them. So if you wrap it up at the end with the strongest points, that will help them in the future. Right? But that's one reason why your summation is so important. Contest or no contest. Do that in your club as well. And I, I might as well say this now. In the clubs, I've noticed that a lot of people take the manual, they fill it out, they come up and they literally go down the questions in the manual. Yes, you did this. Yes, you did that. Well, we need to try to make our evaluations in our clubs like an evaluation contest, where we use the manual as our guide. The person can read all of your comments later. Pick out the things that are really effective and use that in your verbal evaluation so the other people in the club can also learn because they watch the speech with you and that will help them learn what to do. All right. So remember, you only have 210 seconds. Use them wisely. A lot of people used to, not so much anymore, but they used to get up and after they thanked everybody, they would then thank the speaker for giving up of their time to come and be a target speaker at our club and we so, and I'm, the clock is ticking, the clock is ticking. So you want to get right to it and you don't need to basically re-say the speech. You need to say what was effective or what you can help them with. Don't go through, you're not proving that you listen to the whole speech. You're helping them, you're coaching them. And your summation theoretically would be 30 seconds, but trust me, usually it's only about 20 seconds because the card goes up, you finish your point, and then you jump into your summation. So when you're taking your notes in that five minutes, think about how you want to leave it. So that if you have to jump to that, you can, and you don't have an abrupt ending. Use time wisely, don't waste time on fillers. Um, so, and this is an interesting thing. Evaluations are pretty much how we teach in Toastmasters. There's no instructor up here. Uh, it's the person giving a speech and someone giving an evaluation and coaching them. And so, it's an interesting concept to think that that's really what they're all about. They're a teaching tool, right? And nobody ever liked the teachers that were overly critical and just said negative things, right? So we want to make sure, again, I can't stress it enough, that we're giving positive feedback of what they did well, okay? And of course, we have to have a summation in case you forget. Uh, know your criteria, so know, uh, now you have a copy of the form, so you want to <coughs> that. You know how to break up your time, right? And where the points, where you should focus, right? And then um, just think of the fact that you want to teach your speaker <coughs> and the audience well. And good luck in your contest. Okay, so does anybody have any questions about that? Before I move on. Yeah, Donna. And maybe this is for question and answer. But when you coming to your summation, should huh? you say in summary? You can. You can, certainly. Yeah. Or you can use another phrase and to wrap this up or okay. you know, something that I'd really like you to take away from this. You know, so but absolutely. Yeah, Bob. Is there a ratio between how many positive comments you make to how many uh, comments you make to I think that comments where they can improve themselves should also be positive. <laughs> so uh, so go out there and cut everything they do great and then summarize and tell them two things they did wrong. No, no, that's not 
you know, you want to balance it out. What? 50-50? Okay, so I have won my division and I've placed a district. I'm not an expert. Everybody has a good day, everybody has a bad day. I can tell you on the break how awful I did one year in our evaluation contest here at top, where I said, I got nothing, and I sat down. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it was terrible, because I hated, I hated the person's speech, and I was so obsessed with, with how much I hated their speech that when I got up, I couldn't think of anything nice to say, and I kind of went through it, and I knew that I had blown it, and I just said, I got nothing. So if I say six things positive, I should say six things that could be uh, Probably won't have time. <laughs> no. Won't have time no. to do that many. Maybe Is three. there a ratio involved here? For me, I think people remember three things. I can pretty much remember three things I needed at the grocery store without writing them down. Any more than that, I'm lost. So I would say pick out the three that you think will give them the most help, will be most effective and think of the things that they did. Chances are a target speaker has not finished their CC, so they're still learning, but there should be at least one or two things that if you found out that person was giving their second speech, you'd go, holy cow, are you kidding me? You already did this and this and this. So point out a, you know, two or three of those things, and then if there's something you can improve upon, do that as well. But I would not, so when you get to your summation, you know, you want to say, you should continue doing this, that was very effective, and do that, and then what you might consider doing is the blah, 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 blah. Well, an example, an example of that would be too, because in Donna's contest, at the area contest, the guy that she competed against, we were talking about that today, he gave 20. Yeah. Launch <laughs> right. oh. Now, unless Thanks. somebody was filming. And of course, I was sitting there going, I didn't say that, I didn't say that, I didn't say that, I'm going to lose. But out of those 20, how many were really right. important? Right? Some were just opinions. You know? Virginia, you shouldn't have worn black. You should have worn red today. Okay, thank you. Right? The other, the other comment I was thinking about, because in Mount Prospect, there was a member, his name was Ken Uding. He was a long-standing Toastmaster. He was in Toastmasters for probably, at that point, 20, 28 years. Do you remember him, Don? No, Ken I never remember. That was before him. And he used to call it report and repeat. Virginia was talking about how some evaluators will just repeat what the speaker said. Yeah, yeah the story. You hear that all the time. Yeah. All the time. Like, they call, they call that, yeah, they call it yeah. report and repeat. You're just repeating what the person said, right. but you aren't really giving them And then any, you said this, and then you did right. this, and then you said that, and it's like... But unless when you said that, it helped me realize right. that... This is your grandmother, and she was sick, and whatever. Yeah. Well, I, I thought that when you give an evaluation, I'm not supposed to evaluate the speech, but how they gave the speech to uh, the speech. So give them, like, get to the point is, is one, what is it, number two, or number three? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I, the evaluation should be done to how well they did to get to the point. But when you're in a contest, you have no idea just know which of the ten projects yeah, they're right. doing. Mm -hmm. See, and that's, and that's what I'm saying, that we, we get so <laughs> caught up with what we're learning on that project and those ten things in the, in the book that we, we need to use that as a guide and put that down and put it as if you were going to do it in a contest. Because the person can read all those and they can look at all the check boxes. But we have to get better at, at just speaking it in a, in a way that helps everyone. Because the other people aren't sitting there with the checklist. So a lot of times they don't know what you're talking about. Can I add to Sure. When you're giving things that, that you like, that they're doing well, I'd say maybe three to four things. Because again, it depends on how deep you're going to go. Mm -hmm. So something might be, you know, you have a really nice presence, and you, you might say a couple more sentences. And then you're going to talk about the story, and you're going to analyze the story, and you can go deeper into that. So you're going to, because you have to analyze the speech too. So you have to have, make sure you have enough time to do that. Then when you go to the recommendations, I'd say two to three at the most. At the most. At the most. Mm -hmm. 
Two to three. Three is the max because yeah. they can't remember more than that. And you might get discouraged too. Right. Well, that's the other thing. They have to do 20 things differently. Well, gosh, I guess my speech was awful. And it probably wasn't. But you're not going to just tell them what they can improve. You're going to show them how, how. to do it. And so that's going to take up more time. Exactly. It's like if you say, oh, well, you were you know, kind of going back and forth. And what you really want to do is walk with purpose. And then you move to the next thing, and the person is like, OK, can I Google walk with purpose? What is walk with purpose? <laughs> right? So what you need to say is, well, when you made that point about your mother, you could have stood over here and told her part of the story. And then when you made that point about your father, you could have come over here. And then when you had your conclusion, you could have come right here to the center. And that way, people know that this is one part of the story, this is another part of the story, and this being your, your more powerful position is where you're going to make your point. Now, do you have to do it that way? No. You could have something that happens over here and then something else that happens over there, and you could make your point still being over there. And the way you get around that, we learned at one of our other workshops, is with your belly button. It's hard to find mine, but I know it's there. It's just well padded. If you use your body, so I could still be over here, but if I face this way, the people over there are still getting my attention. Right? So you, if you don't have to always go all the way over to the end of the stage to speak to them, you just turn and face them. Yeah. We are jumping from the contest to the, the projects. One of the suggestions I would say for evaluations in the project, the getting comfortable with visual aids, I don't remember which number. Mm -hmm. I used to sell medical equipment, so I had long shoehorns, bath chairs, all these wonderful things. My evaluator said, well, you should have gotten comfortable using the overhead and that doing media. That's not the requirement. And it's like, she didn't mention at all that I'm talking about safety in the home. Why see a slide? Right. See the toilet seat that's going to save your life. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody else said, well, I thought it was bad with all the toys. Well, okay, maybe you didn't like it. Right. And I was a general evaluator for that, so of course I got to evaluate him. Right. And I brought it to his attention that there's no such thing, whenever anyone is up there, we as evaluators, we're never saying, I didn't like that because it was bad. Or you did this bad. No, there's always room to improve. Right. And this was and a Toastmaster for like 21 years that just, said, well, you, what it was all that stuff. You should be using the overhead. Why? I've never done that. Some people hate PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah, like me. Our CEO will walk into the meeting and say, turn it off and tell me what you're going to say. Don't let the slides do yeah. it. So when you evaluate, be specific. Right. Be and specific. Don't say, I'm using what is needed. It meets the criteria. Right. Don't overpick. Right. Suggest maybe you should learn how to use it, and that would help a lot more. Yeah. They also, what happens, Neil, sometimes is that, to your point about the project they're on, they'll evaluate that person at a different level. They'll oh, yeah. bring things into the evaluation that have nothing to do with that particular project. That was only my second speech. I went yeah. from icebreaker right to that one. Oh, you skipped that. So I, yeah. I skip all over, but. Yeah. Now, the only point. time, Jerry, that I, I mention things that aren't in the project is if it's their first or second speech and they've already accomplished something in the seventh right. or eighth, I'll bring up that you're already doing something that most people don't even start practicing until their seventh or eighth speech. I will do that, right. but yeah, it's unfair. <coughs> okay. okay, so now, oh, Tim? Yeah, you know, a lot of times when I try to give very specific evaluations mm -hmm. for somebody who I really want to help, Right. They never win the contest, or, or they never work, work out. Oh, you, you know, mean you never win the contest. <laughs> I, or, or something like that. <laughs> what am I missing in something like that? I mean, is there a difference between actually helping the speaker and crafting it for a wider evaluation audience? I think it's that you have to give them positive mm -hmm. feedback and what, how it was effective, what they did that was great, and then when you give the improvement feedback, you 
Don't start off with what you need to improve upon. Start with, while what you did was effective, what you might want to consider is, okay, so I think it's all, isn't this true with even our regular conversations? <coughs> it's how we say it. Mm -hmm. Are we saying it that we do appreciate it, but really you need to use the mop and water when you're cleaning the floor, not just a Swifter, right? Um, get, anybody had teenagers? They think anything can be done with a Swifter, yeah. <laughs> including a shower stall. So, um, <laughs> you know, so it, it's how we say it. So what I would do is if you were recorded, I would look at that recording and compare it to what you what we're just talking about and see did I give enough positive feedback to balance out the improvement and is there a way of rephrasing the improvement suggestions mm -hmm. to still be positive and it you have to think about it and you have to practice it you know um, okay all right we need to move on oh okay sorry one last okay I just want to say this was very good because I always thought the person that gave the most suggestions for improvement was the best evaluator. So this has been very helpful to I me. I like that. So just pick the most important ones. Yes. All right, so now what I'd like to pass out is the form we currently use at <coughs> TOP. So here at TOP, if you've never visited us before for a regular meeting, we don't do table topics. We don't do word of the day. We don't have an op counter. We don't have a snack work master. What we do is we do speeches and evaluations. And we really focus on evaluations because when you think about it, most of the people in the club have either done speaking in their profession or they have completed their CC manual. So they've already done the education part. What they want is they want a, a better evaluation, a more comprehensive evaluation to help them move to the next level in their speaking. All right? So this is the form that we focus on. On one side it has content, and on the other side it has delivery. One person gives the content evaluation. The other person gives the delivery evaluation. And then we have a round robin where everyone in the room, including guests, are asked to contribute to if they had another idea on top of what someone else has said. The Toastmasters International has put in their new rule book that there is a form that we should be using at all of our speech evaluation contests. And I can say that it has not been consistent in the contests that I have been helping out at. Some of them know nothing about the form. My area contest, we were required to use the form. Only one sheet, if I correct. Just that this one. form. It's one page. But you can't use two of those pages. No. no just the one. Unless, okay, unless, unless they give everybody two pages. <laughs> that I didn't hear. Okay. Okay. So you can't it have a... It has to be equal. It has to be fair, fair to everyone. everyone. Uh, you can't bring a blank sheet of paper for your scribble notes and then use this for your other notes. What I was told was to do my scribble notes on the back and the ones I'm going to use in the room on the front. You may or may not experience this because it has not been consistent this year. I'm pretty sure in the future it will be very consistent. Val talked to Toastmasters International twice to confirm that this is what we are supposed to be doing. So I didn't want anybody to be shocked when they got to their contest and said, why didn't anybody tell me about this for? Now that being said, that doesn't mean that these other forms, and Val's got some that she'll talk about in a minute, that they're not useful. So I can only tell you my experience. What I do is I know 
the areas of the speech that I'm going to look at. I'm always going to look at the, oh, the, I always write down the title. If it was a super title, I want to tell them it was a super title. I always put something about the opening. So there are certain things. So I took that piece of paper and I put the speaker's name at the top and I put the title and I wrote opening, you know, and body, conclusion, improvements, you know, so that I didn't forget something. Now, I probably <coughs> would have forgotten, but just in case I was spacing out that day, I would remind myself that, oh, did they have conclusion? I'm not sure. So I would suggest that you look at some forms. Um, some other methodologies are to take a piece of paper, divide it into four quadrants. Um, Stan Pistorsky, he always would say, what did you see? What did you hear? What did you feel? And I have no idea what the fourth one was. Um, but something like that. So whatever methodology works for you, write your own at home. It's kind of like writing a grocery list. Even if you leave the grocery list in the car, you're going to remember most of the things on the list. So if you know that there's five things that you particularly want to look for because that's where you feel the meat of the speech is, write that on your blank piece of paper and then do that. So these still have benefit in helping you develop. And it also helps you in developing your speeches. If you have an idea of what the audience is looking for or what might be important to the audience, then that's what's on the form. All right, and so Val is going to go over a couple of other forms before we have our break. No, no I already have them You hand them up. Okay. Did they summarize? 
did they have a call to action? And then so now you've got the format out here because now you know one, two, three, four steps. And then you already have your three points here. So now when you go to give your speech, this is all you need. The bottom. The three points that you like and your two to three points of your recommendations. And then you go into detail. You don't have to write everything out. So this is just an idea for you to, to look at and really try to get that, that, that format in your head. <clears throat> any, any questions on, on this? Were there this more of that one form that you held up for, not that one, the other one? Um, I have some yeah. more here. Oh, okay. Oh. Which one yeah. did you? I need one of those. There's uh, not one. Okay. okay. All right, what we're going to do is take a five minute break. Is that okay? Oh, okay. And then we're going to come back and then do videos. Oh, good. Woo! But no popcorn. Let's go. Maybe she gets it. Name an effective political leader in history who couldn't speak well. Mr. Gorbachev. Tear down this wall. There aren't any. Because when it comes to a disease... Freedom requires leadership, and leadership requires oratory. You have to speak to be heard. I have a dream. It's all about personal growth and guts. Never give in. Never, never, never. Welcome back, everyone. We're getting into the second part of the meeting. But first, let me introduce our presenter for the second half. You've already met her already, but let me give you a little bit of her background so you get to know Val. First of all, Val is a certified world-class speaking coach and trainer. She's also a licensed master practitioner in neuro-linguistic programming, she can explain that to you, which is the study of influence and personal performance. She's also the co-author of World-Class Speaking in Action with somebody, I think, by the name of Craig Valentine, who some of you know, of course. Yeah. Valerie's also a member of Toastmaster since 1996. She's a seasoned Toastmaster. And of course, Valerie is a distinguished Toastmaster. Valerie, for some of you, have taken some of her sessions. She also studied improv at Second City, as well as the Long Girl Performing Arts Academy. Valerie also conducts workshops for business professionals on speaking and storytelling using improv and neuro-linguistic programming techniques. So please help me welcome distinguished Toastmaster Valerie Fusai. Well, I'm not going to talk a lot. It's like my improv. We're just going to do, we're going to have everyone else do work. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to tell you the new book is out, the rule book. If you're competing, definitely every year you should download it and read it, read it from page to page because there's, there's changes in it. So this is where we found that the new contestant notes are in there. One thing I wanted to add to that is that uh, there were a couple contests that I was in that we were told that the sergeant at arms had to talk to us while we were waiting. And that's not in the rule book. So it's just not in the rule book. But it's up to the contest chair if they want to do that. Uh, so you're going to have it maybe in some contests, but not in others. But it's not, not, it's not something that you have to do. So if you don't want to talk to them, you don't have to talk to them. You can put your earbuds on. Uh, what my theory on that is that the first speaker gets to go up and present. They just heard the speech. Our district is big. We were six, now we're eight, usually in a competition. Right? Well, it's nine. 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 So now we're nine. By the time the ninth person gets up, if they've had to talk to somebody for nine speakers, do they remember what that speech was? No. So who is now at a disadvantage? So that's just, just my opinion. What we're going to do is, I'm going to show some videos, and Roger's going to show some videos, and then we're going to, first I'm going to show you a third place winner of the contest. I went back to our district, I think it was 2011, where Prez won. I'm going to show you the target speaker and Prez as the winner. I'm not going to show the other speakers because 
they're in our district, so I didn't want to, this is going to be on YouTube, I didn't want to evaluate the other speakers. But I am going to show you speakers from other districts. So first, if we want to start with um, the one third place winner, what I want you to do is listen to the speech, and you might start you know, taking some notes on what you thought, that how they presented. We're not listening to her target speaker, we're just listening to her presentation. And take just on some notes. We're going to then move on to, we can just a really quick uh, debrief on it, and then we're going to move on to the, the next one. I don't know if that's the right clip. That's the 2015 spring contest. Yeah, that one. We're going to do that one. Sound is muted, so you might want to unmute it. On the computer, I mean. Minimize the video. Hit the escape key on the keyboard. Right there at the lower left-hand part, the sound, the little speaker on the bottom. It was muted. Now you should be good to go.
No, the, the, oh, you have an opening, a quick opening, and then you're going to, then what? Talk about what they did well. Tell them what they did well. Recommendation. Recommendations. Yeah, and what I want to do on Chris, <coughs> so the first part with the, the opening and then what they did well, it was a, a minute and 65 seconds. Wow. Suggestions was a minute and 12 seconds. And the summary was 34 seconds. Yeah. So when you practice, you know, go on YouTube. I actually have a slide I can send you of the speakers if you want. I can send you the links that you can go and review these if you wanted to. You wanted to review them. Um. So, but you can go on YouTube, just Google contest, evaluation contest, or speaking uh, um, humorous or international, right. whatever it is you want to practice. And then it'll bring, it'll bring up a lot of the speeches and the evaluations. Then see what that what their formula is for each of the speakers. Two two of the speakers, I only listened to two of the speakers from D30 when the press spoke, and two of them didn't do a summary. In fact, they were all they were all advanced speakers. And one of them finished at 2.95 minutes and didn't do a summary. So we actually had time to do a summary. Now when we get up in front of an audience, sometimes we get nervous <laughs> and we might forget something. So it's if you do your little outline on your on your blank form, <laughs> do your outline on here so that you remember what you need to talk about, so that you don't forget your summary. And watch each segment according to the time, with the, the green, the yellow, and the red, so that you kind of program yourself to, okay, once it gets to the green, where am I? Once it gets to the yellow, where do I have to be? Once it gets to the red, I better summarize. Mm -hmm. Because that's about all you have left once it gets to the red. And because otherwise you start talking really fast like I do at the very end, and then you have to summarize. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, Jeff. Is Chris? He's from this area. Yes. yes. He lives in Chicago. Well, he's from Bulgaria, right? Yeah. He's from Bulgaria. Well, uh, yeah, that's living. He's from our district. He uh, lives he's in mostly Chicago. in the city. Yeah. He's in his one of his home clubs is another one that meets on Wednesday night. It's uh, I'll, I think it's called uh, it's another advanced club. Well, that's Windy City Toastmasters. But not, primary, not Windy City. His, it's primary, so his primary club was Lincoln Park Toastmasters. His next club was Extreme Toastmasters. That's the one I'm thinking of. That's the one that meets downtown, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, then he belongs to us. He's also very Thanks. approachable. Yeah. He did that. He's also I very... Because a lot of times they'll ask Chris to come speak at a TLI or um, at, a, at a conference or mm -hmm. something. So when you see... Him on there, he gives excellent oh, presentations. Yeah. Excellent, very organized. Lots of lots of good material. Make sure you get to the districts to all the training that you can when you see that there's going to be a speaker there, because usually usually we have really good speakers. So for you, when you leave, if you're in a contest, download this every year, so because it's a little bit different every year before you present so that you know what the rules are, any changes in it. This is your new form, and I'll, if you leave me your email, I'll send you the links for the videos that we had today, so you can go and view, view them again if you want to. The forms that you got, I know there's a lot of forms, but look at them and just kind of absorb them to see what, what points you can use to improve your evaluations and that only evaluation of your speech is also. So, uh, Jerry? Thank you. We're going to right now, so just a quick, quick, couple quick things just to wrap this up. Toastmasters on purpose, we do these workshops 
for our own benefit so we can learn and continue to grow as Toastmasters, but we also, it's our way of paying it forward to other Toastmasters. We get the opportunity, everybody in the club, 60, 70 percent of us are distinguished Toastmasters, and everyone else is at advanced, you know, working on advanced manuals, belongs to multiple clubs. So I would encourage all of you who've never been to the top before for one of our regular meetings to come back on October the 5th. It's on your agendas. That'll be our next regular meeting and experience what a regular meeting is like. We love doing these workshops because did you learn something tonight? Did you yes, take away yes. some real value? Definitely. I know I did, and you know, we've done a number of these workshops and always listening to Val and then you get a new perspective. It's just kind of like you get your mind working a little bit different directions. It makes you think about different things, the way that you're currently evaluating, and things that we can all do to improve. Tony is an example. Tony belongs to Mount Prospect Toastmasters. And Tony, I know, he has his own form that he's devised that works well for him. It gives him a construct and a format that it keeps him on task in the way that he wants to evaluate. Val has a form that she uses. Press developed, devised a form that he uses. Does that work for each and every one of us? No. Like she said, that's why she gave you samples, copies of different ones. You can figure out taking some of those things and devising a construct and a format that works for yours. But I think Val summed it up by saying, you've got to develop a mental construct, your own mental form. Because when it comes time for you to compete in a contest, you need to know how you're going to approach it. We've all seen Toastmasters. All of you, a lot of you in the room know Barry Nixon. Barry Nixon's the only Toastmaster in District 30 that's won all five contests in the history of Toastmasters, not just District 30. We have four, but he's won multiple times on a couple of them. Okay, but he's five times district champion. The reason I bring up Barry, because to, to Val's point, he was in a contest, the South Division contest, and I was there. He did a fantastic evaluation. He did everything right, except what did he miss, Val? The summer. The summer. That cost him the contest. And after it was all done, I said, B. Anyway, I said, why do you think you didn't win? He goes, the summer is. <laughs> that was the difference between him winning. I mean, because he, he blew everybody out of the way. He was animated, he had a humor to it, everything that president in his evaluation but he missed the summary, and that cost him the division contest. Otherwise, he would have gone on the district again right. to compete in evaluation. So that can happen, just keeping in mind to follow, follow that format, and it works. The last piece of business is that... The forms that I got, that yes. I gave you, are on Google. If you just Google evaluation forms and a whole bunch of people. So our next, like I said, our, our regular meeting is October the 5th, and there are a contest that I just want to make you aware of. I think most of you are aware of some of the division contests, but for the Northwest Division, which we're part of, that takes place on October the 8th. Okay. And that's going to be right here at Harper. It'll be in the D building in Lecture Hall D195. It's an awesome lecture hall. <coughs> For a contest, it seats about 150 people. We're trying to break the record for the Northwest Division for uh, the most number of people attending a division contest. Right now, we do hold a record when we had a contest there a number of years ago in Z102, we had 120 people. The most ever for a division contest. It'd be great if we could break okay. that. But more importantly, to go listen to the speakers and to listen to the evaluations. Donna will be competing, so we want to certainly go and cheer her on along with the other contestants because it's always nice for. I'm going to just give me a moment. A uh, few give others. Moment. <laughs> so Donna will be representing one part, and then Val is competing because Val won in her area. She's a member of Lake Zurich Toastmasters, where Donna is a member of. Mount Prospect Toastmasters, so come and support both of them, along with, <laughs> hold on, I'm talking about evaluation right now. Oh, I'll get through. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side, other than evaluation, Donna and Bob are competing in Humorous. Yeah. And Bob was a member of Toastmasters on Purpose. He originally competed in Crystal Lake Toastmasters, so he'll represent top in the division contest, and Donna will be representing 
among prospect Toastmasters. And the humorous speeches. What, Virginia? I'm in the North Division. She's in the North Division. <laughs> well, he was talking about Northwest. Let me get through the Northwest Division. I'm sorry, Northwest is best. What can I say? But anyway, Virginia, Virginia, Virginia's competing September the 29th. She'll be competing in the North Division contest. Beth Weinstein is the division director for the North Division. And that is September the 29th, which is next week, Thursday. Where? Aon Hewitt All right. from Lincolnshire. It is on the district calendar, so you can check that out and go support Virginia. But the contest, you have fun at them. Tim. Shall we close with a jingle? No. <laughs> <laughs> so again, on behalf of Toastmasters on Purpose, thank you all for coming this evening. We hope you got a lot of value, but we hope to see you again. If it's not October 5th, come back for another meeting. And we would love to have you consider being a part of Toastmasters on Purpose, because we are the only advanced Toastmasters club in the Northwest Division. Have a great night, and have a great rest of your week. I call this